Okay, so uh, this point, let's run the simulation, the setup, pretty much the same conditions as the 2D case. So remember, just we have the mesh, drag and drop here, update, right click, update. So it will convert the mesh from the ANSYS measure to Fluent format. So here you see that you start to, to have all the files. Okay, so what is doing the conversion? Let me just go. So I'm saving everything here in my desktop. And see here that you have Gen 1, Sys 1, okay, where you are saving all, all files. So if I go back here, so for instance, you go here, properties. See here, Sys 1, you are saving the mesh. So in Sys 1, you have the mesh. So now when we, 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 we have the Fluent case and we start to work in Fluent, we're going to see Flu 1 and, and everything. So let's do it. So now I have this and to launch Fluent, double click there. See here, directory name Flu 1. Always remember, double precision, okay? Choose the number of processors, four in my case. Actually, I have six, but well, let me put four. Okay, and it will open. It will create this directory name with all the fluent information. So as you go back here, probably I think, see that now you see flu one and you know that a specific case, you're going to have all the files there. So then you is going to start to write files there. So that's how you know where scenes are, okay? What I say that I don't like to work to launch Fluent within the workbench because it's start to save backup files, a lot of information. And sometimes it's difficult to me to move in this directory in the key. So it's better to go outside of this workbench bubble. So most of the time just use workbench to generate geometry mesh and convert, that's all. Okay, so we're here. Okay, so we have the, the mesh, everything here, you have reference system, and those are rows there. So for instance, let me show something that I didn't, sh I haven't shown so far, but uh, let me show it here right now. So see this option here, domain, see here that you have a scale. This is very important, okay, so you open this, it's going to give you the dimensions of your domain. So always check this one, because sometimes it may happen that is doing the wrong conversion you forget to do something or you put a different conversion you have the wrong dimensions okay so you just check here that you have the right dimensions in this case from zero to seven is it's okay but it is they are not right you can scale everything okay so you can convert units or use scaling factors to put it there it's up to you the other thing that i wanted to show you is here so this is starting to become important in 3d mesh quality so you press here, quality evaluate mesh, and this will give you uh, a diagnostic of the mesh quality, okay? So see that you have this value here. This is the one that you should control, okay? So this value should be, it shouldn't be lower than 10 to the minus two. It can be, but and a good, a very good, a good mesh, a mesh that is not going to, to give you problems. It's when this value is larger than 10 to the minus two, or 0 .0, 0 0.01, okay? So you have it lower than that, you can run, but you know that eh, you might have still some numerical issues, a little bit diffusion, but check always, always check this. And here also you have another option in quality, improve mesh quality. So in the case that you see that this mesh quality is not very good, you go here, improve mesh quality, and then you press improve and it will do some a smoothing of the mesh and it will try to improve to get a better mesh. Okay, so then you, you create a value and see that the values, see here the 0.16, which is already good one. Now it went to 0.3, which is even better. Okay, so it's doing some smoothing to improve the mesh quality. But use this one only if you have values lower than 0.01, okay? And also, by the way, not necessarily when you improve mesh quality means that it's going to get a better mesh. Sometimes it, it cannot do anything, so there is no point, okay? But most of the time it will work. So these are options that I show you now here in 3D where they are useful in 2D. Most of the time they are going to get good quality meshes, small meshes, and the good scaling. So there is no need to, to check that one, but it's one you can check. And also here you go go in, in info size. See here that you have the mesh size, okay? So you have 
memory size a few options. So now let's set up the case. We have done everything, so let's follow the vertical workflow here. So we go here, set up, general. This is, we have said that this is okay. We have a steady pressure base, no gravity for the moment. This is okay. Then models, here's where you choose your model for the moment, we're only interested here. So when we go later now in the course and we start to see more electric, we're going to see all these constants, everything different models, but the K omega SST, I have to say that is the most general one. Okay. It will give you good result most of the time. And I say most of the time because it have deficiencies that we're going to explore later, but the fact that it have deficiencies doesn't mean that it's not a good model. It's okay, but you, you should be aware of that. Then go in materials, define materials property. So again, we say this one like this, and this one should be one nine one six to give a Reynolds of 100,000 using an inlet velocity of one. So here, then here, nothing to do there. Boundary conditions, double click there and see inlet, velocity inlet. And let's put the velocity in the one and normal to boundary. And here is up to you. So now in this case, let me use one and two there. Okay. Different from the previous to the case. So let me put that. There is no problem. Apply. Then wall is a wall. See that no, there is no symmetry. Symmetry. Pressure outlet. It's okay. You fix it at zero at the outlet. And here, let's put one and two. And we're done with boundary conditions. Nothing to do here, nothing to do here. These are advanced options, reference values. Remember, this is to compute coefficients. Usually we use the mean values at the inlet. So if you select there, it would put those values, but you can choose, you can put manually any value there that you want. Okay, it's up to you. Nothing to do here, nothing to do here. Okay, so at this point we're pretty much doing well. So now we go to the solution, set up the solution method. So let me remember every now and then save everything. Sometimes mysteriously crash. By the way, you can also run without using the GUI. Okay. That is more advanced options, but because this GUI, <laughs> when you become, start to become a power user, you will see that this GUI is not necessarily anymore. No, it's not necessary anymore. So here you have the method. So you have different methods. So what is fluent propulsion by default, I think you can take it. It's a good one, but this case in 3d is interesting. Okay. So see here that you have different methods. So you, you can run and I invite you to run with the couple and then run using the simple and check the cost per iteration. Okay, you will see that the simple, the cost for iteration is very low. That is, it's very fast. Each iteration is very fast. Instead, the couple is heavy. Each iteration takes time, but it might happen that the couple, it can get, uh, it, it, can, it can reduce the residuals much faster than the simple, okay? So I say it can reduce because that, that not necessarily means that the couple will have better convergence rate or be better convergence, okay? But you can, test between both of them and you will see. Without doubt, the couple will consume more memory. So as you go here and you launch the ta task manager, as you monitor the memory, you will see that this couple, by the way, look at that and already using like 16 gigs of memory for this for this case. It's not the actual, actual mesh, but this mesh will be using like, probably will use in like two or three gigs of memory. So you monitor your memory, okay? Because large mesh meshes in, in the coupled solver use a lot, a lot of memory. But for the time being, let's use this. Then you move to control. This is related to the solution method. Okay, later we're going to talk about this on the relaxation, but use the full values. Report monitors, as usual, define, define the monitor. So we know that we want to create the flux report for the mass flow. So inlet outlet, I will call it imbalance. You can leave the default name. It's up to you. Report to plot. Okay. And then I want to also create the one for the Y plus in the surface. Okay. So I want a facet average. I select the wall. The quantity is here, turbulence, and then you have white plus, you call it white plus average. 
you can save it to a plot, also you can save the file, it's up to you, so in this case just to the plot there. And if you want to create more monitors, it's up to you, so you can create like maximum truncated energy, whatever, okay, it's up to you. These two, for these cases, are, are fine. Monitors, residuals, default residuals, default residuals are okay. Nothing else to do here, so register, this is advanced initialization and now we can initialize okay so you can use a standard initialization using inlet free stream values like this or the hybrid initialization okay so in this case i will use this one that that usually this one can give you much better results than the standard one or the one that you have uniform values so this one might give you better results better values so you can get faster convergence but not necessarily the case just to show you uh, calculation activities. So here you can save. This is important because you can say the you can put here the saving frequency. So so far we have run and up to the latest uh, iteration. But sometimes you you, you, don't, you don't run a hundred or two hundred iterations. That is fast. Sometimes you, you run ten thousand iterations. So it's a good idea to save with a given frequency. This is where you give that frequency. So let's say that I want to save every hundred iterations. You would say so this is important because it might happen that the solution crash i know you have a power failure your computer switch off so you know that when you reach 100 you you, you save the solution and then well if you have a problem then you can restart from that okay you need to restart from zero and as you go to edit here you have some other options and you have this one so if you don't put anything it will save the solution every hundred iterations so if you are running up to 10,000 you will have 10,000 a uh, hundred files okay but it might be the case that you need to have those hundred files so you say here retain the most re recent files so it's retaining the last five files so in that case if you're running to 10,000 it's just getting the last five files okay so it will be from 10,000 uh, 10, the 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 files last files okay so usually this is a good idea i put here five sometimes i put two if i have very large files okay but usually if you are not interested in keeping all those files with the saving saving frequency just leave that this auction that most of the time for a steady flows this is recommended this is that uh, standard workflow approach that you follow here this is also you can add some stuff but for the moment this is advanced option we need to touch everything again and invite you to press this button help and you can get the help and see what is going on there so at this point we're ready to run again every now and then and save project and we can run okay so let me change here okay saving everything so if i go here see the file so in the fluent cases you go here see that now i have many files so see that you have the, your mesh and case setup initial solution this is the settings if you want to copy settings to somewhere else so you start to get all the files so i want to run as out to a thousand and let me press calculate and at this point let's wait okay so this will be a little bit slow though we're almost half a million cells in my case and running with four cores be careful monitor also your memory but i have to say that most of the modern laptops today have at least eight gigs of memory which i think it is more than enough to run this so see that i have a rather powerful laptop i have 32 gigs of memory six cores okay so for me it's not a problem but maybe monitor this one for you memory is a problem reduce the cell count, but I'm sure that if you have eight gigs, it's not a, uh, a problem. So see that here we have Y plus value. So see that this is a, for this Y plus value, we see that it's a wall modeling. We're using wall functions. We have here the imbalance. Okay, so this is the mass flow at the inlet minus the mass flow at the outlet. So the method is conservative. So this imbalance should be close to zero. Or in other words, what is going on in is going on, is going out and your residuals okay so everything monitoring here and everything seems to be smooth here okay and let's wait a little bit here so this might take a long time to to, to run or a long time doesn't mean days but probably 10 20 minutes so let's wait a little bit and see you later
Okay, in my case, I arrived to a convert solution. So let's see what we have. Press OK here. So look at my residuals have a nice convergence rate, but not necessarily means that you are reaching 10 to the minus 3 that you have reached a convert solution. So remember that that, that is why it's important to monitor so, some other quantities. So as we look at the imbalance, see that is kind of steady, it's not oscillating much, it's a low value. And Y plus also, maybe we might need to run a little bit longer in this case. So see that Y plus is a direct indication of wall shear stresses, okay? So see that this one is still is not it's not straight here. Maybe still it is oscillating and still is converging. So it might be a, a good idea to let it run for a little bit longer until you see that this one becomes a straight or you have a statistically steady trend here. Okay. In this case, I'm not going to run it anymore. It's up to you, but see that these are things that you need to monitor. In the case that, let's say, starting aerodynamics, you are, you are computing forces, you're going to monitor the forces, and so you see that it's those forces still are oscillating, you need to, to, to run longer those simulations, okay? In this case, I will take it for granted. It's a good one, but it might, it is, this might need to, to, it's an indication that you might need to run it a little bit longer. So we have a solution. And what we need to do now is ju just the post-processing, okay? So you have everything, and now you go here, graphics, contours, and then at the wall, remember that we can plot the Y plus value. You have it here. So here you have the distribution, okay? So if I would recall, this will be the, this is the inlet. And then you have the outlet, okay? So you have your distribution there. You can check the pressure also. So inlet, outlet. So this is the inlet and the outlet. So, And then also you can plot velocity. Velocity, remember the wall will be zero, okay? But if you switch off this option, you're plotting the null next, in this cell next to that. So here you can get an idea of the entrance length. That is something that you can compute also the the the, end, the, the entrance length as a flow now how long it takes to develop the fully the fully turbulent flow. So now if you go here to surfaces, so remember previously we created lines. Here we can create let's say a plane. So see that here is asking you the reference, or so you can choose like this or like this, I will choose this one and it will put, put it in the middle set. I know that is the middle point that is dissecting my domain and you create that surface. Okay, so see here that you have it there. As you go here, you can plot there. So now I hide that one and see that now you can do your plotting in this plane and here you have the velocity. So you have your velocity there. Okay, so also you can add the line plot. So you can go here and new line. And it's the same stuff as previously. I will do the plot in here. Six, nine, and then I will go here. I know I don't recall so probably. Minus size, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero is okay. So I create a line there and let's see if I see it here. So, so I have it there. Okay. So, but in this case, so see, this is the importance of oh, knowing your reference system that how you're orienting sense. So see that that one, I put it here at the beginning where this is the inlet. I need to put it in the, in the other extreme. So if I go back here, should be zero one and zero zero one. So close. So let me go here. So see, this is important how you you put your reference system. So now I have it at the outlet. So this is okay. We have these two lines. What else we can do? So later I'm going to show you to do more advanced pro post-processing the Y plus, all that is tough here, but this is the, the basic sense that we can do. Uh, you have vectors, be careful, do not put the vectors in the whole domain because you're going to, it's likely it's going to, to crash because you, you, you have too much information on your screen. Uh, for instance, this is, can be helpful pass line. So let me show you how to, to, to use this one. 
So basically this is to release the string lines from, from a surface. So let's say that I want to release the in string lines from the, from the inlet. So you press here and see that you have there your string lines. Okay. This is the flow path. Okay. So you can change here the integration constant, the, 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 the steps that it will follow. Okay, so you can get longer string. So in this case, they are, they are straight, but if you have, I know, some funky geometries with elbows, pipes, or sterile dynamics, you will see that it will follow vortices and everything. It's quite nice to, 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 to look at. So you can put the poles here, so see that here you can see how it's following those paths, how it, see that it's accelerating here. So this is cool. Now this is tough, uh, nice seems to visualize. Again, be careful because if you have very large meshes and if you put all the strings lines, it's likely that it will crash. So always play around, put a large value there, and then I start to adjust that lar those large values. Vectors, it will be the same as I mentioned. So vectors, you are going to put it in the plane. Do not put in the volume because it's likely will crash. So let me skip two, and then you put it there and see that you have your vectors there. Nice vectors. Okay, particle tracks. For the moment, we don't, we are not going to work with that. Uh, then, for instance, plops. Remember, you have this x y plot, so we can plot in this line that we just created. See that we're plotting that quantity. So I would like to plot there. Okay, this. Okay, no. So leave it like this. It should be one zero, and I want to plot there. Okay, ta ta ta. Velocity. So this is my velocity profile. You can do the same for the turbulent quantities. So see that here you have the turbulent kinetic energy. Boom. Following that, you have the dissipation. Okay, so you go dissipation ray, and you have all the your quantities there. So see here that as we're using wall functions, the quantity does not go to zero. You know, it's dissipating everything in that in, in the wall. So if you check here, the y plus value, the average is something about thirty. Okay. So that's why it doesn't go to series. You recall the 2D cases the, in the 2D, when you have the very, very, very fine mesh, it went somewhere close to, to zero because you're already in the viscous layer. So there you don't dissipate anything. Any case. And then as you move here, okay, you have these plops. The other interesting entry here is reports. Okay, reports again. You, you, you can do a posteriori all these reports definitions. So for instance, you want to recompute fluxes. You go here, fluxes, and just compute it here. So see inlet, outlet. So you want to compute forces, you have it there. So you select the wall and you have here the forces. Then you also select the direction vector. You have bombing, center of pressure. Okay, and also you have all these integrals available. So let me check the surface integral, the wall. So as you compute area, it will give you the surface area. Okay, and then you have facet, let's say the maximum, and I want to know the maximum y plus. So that, and you have there the maximum plus y plus. So it's also possible to know the location. Those are more advanced stuff. But as you see, you can do a lot of post-processing here. So uh, this is all for this case. I have to say the basis attack. So later, I, uh, the next video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly the same stuff, but influent, but it's exactly the same, the, 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 the same steps. Plus also how to save the solution. Also, we saw that how to save the solution along this line of, let's say, velocity, wall shear stresses, and then we're going to do the plotting uh, of the Y plus against U plus, okay, using an external program, okay, so that was that will be the object of the of the next video. So at this point, okay, we can uh, let me close here, okay. So you so if you select this one, it will save the setting files, and you can use that setting file to set up the new case. So I will do it, okay. So it's saving everything, okay. I is closed and see that as you go back to your directory structure, this is the setting file. So in this setting files, you have exactly the same setup that we put. So in the next video that we're going to go outside this workbench, we just going to we, we just need to here to open this 
and we need just to copy this and probably we only need to, to, to copy this file this file we only need the, the, the case file okay so you just get the case file put it somewhere else and then you, you can run so at this point I think we're done okay so remember we run this case we didn't run this one because I put here a very large mesh okay but you can modify this one if you want to run using this one remember that you need to set up your your name it selection for the boundary conditions okay so i think at this point i'm done with this case thank you for the attention see you see you next video bye